Hi, I'm Danger Dan Jers, the host and GM of the D&D Real Play podcast, d and Dark. Join us on Wednesdays for an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy, our cleric. I'm Jordan, and I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. I am Grayson, playing Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. For more information, go to dndarkpodcast.com and listen to us anywhere you find podcasts. everybody, this is Davis over at the CFG, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do with these amazing guests, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can either go to our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com, to listen to the whole library, or go to any podcast services out there. Today, I am with a really awesome voice actor who has done over a hundred roles in anime. You may have heard her in series like Sailor uh, Sailor Moon Eternal as Sailor Neptune, the powerful Merlin in Seven Deadly Sins, the rich girl fighter Karen in Street Fighter V, the super thirsty Juno in Beastars. But you may remember, definitely remember her as the female Titan, aka Annie Leon Hart. I would like to welcome Lauren Landa to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Davis. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing great. I'm just, awesome. uh, yeah, just having a fun time, man. <laughs> yeah. really, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah, no, I, I've been looking forward. I'm looking forward to it too. Definitely, it's, it's really, it's really awesome to, uh, to see, especially now since I mean, the last season of Attack on Titan and all this stuff. It's really kind of brings me back a little bit. So, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, and the fact that I don't I don't know about you, but I did not know this. In fact, I don't think I really don't know if the Attack on Titan cast knew it, but uh we just got a part 3 announced a couple days ago, uh which is pretty amazing for the final season of Attack on Titan. There is a part 3 that's coming next year. Oh. So, I'm actually really happy about that because <laughs> I was really hoping that wouldn't be the last, last episode. I was not mm-hmm. like mentally prepared for it. And I don't think a lot of fans were. So I was very happy that uh, part three was announced. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it. To be honest with you, though, I still haven't seen the most the, the the most recent episode. I'm like, I think I'm two episodes behind on it. But I am surprised that like I was actually dread dreading. I did not know that there was going to be a part three because uh, if they stopped it at that point, I'd be like this this Girl. this creator or these publishers <laughs> <laughs> are cruel to this to the to the fans in general. Right, that would have been my thought too. I was as a you know because I even though I'm a part of the show, I'm also a fan of the show. So watching it and knowing that that's where they left off, if that had been the series finale, oh, I would have been heartbroken. I would have been absolutely heartbroken because that's not closure. And I think if we've learned anything, sometimes, sometimes we do need a little bit of closure. So I totally agree. Well, yeah. I mean, well, the biggest thing, the biggest thing is that what would, would make me, what makes me fear, would make me furious is the fact that the, the manga is, been done for a year or two years now right, right and like right. They, they're so close like it's not like it's a hundred chapters behind or it's it, it is almost one-to-one close to the finish line and they're like saying okay yeah we're not going to finish it it's like I what know. is that <laughs> uh, I, I you know i i for years people kept asking me when's annie coming back is annie coming back is annie coming back and i have not read the manga and um i know myself uh bryce pappenbrook uh I think Jessica Cavello, uh, I think 
I think a lot of people in the cast have not read the manga, so we don't want any spoilers. Like we've been avoiding mm-hmm. spoilers, so we don't know what's coming and what's happening. So anytime somebody would ask me, "Is Annie coming back? When's Annie coming back?" I I would I just wouldn't know what to tell them because I literally would had no I would have no idea, and so you know I kept thinking, "Oh my gosh, if they just leave her in that crystal, how?" horrible would that be how awful would that be to introduce this fantastic amazing character and then to not have her come out of the that would just be oh that would just break my heart that would break my heart so that would be kind of it's like what about annie it's like oh yeah we forgot about her she's still in the yeah exactly and then and then then the true meaning of annie are you okay are you okay annie no (laughs) i'm not okay it's like especially not now Michael Jackson clearly called it back in 1988 when he made that movie. <laughs> that, that's, oh, that's man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining me. I'd love, uh, I'd love to geek out with you as all like this week. So it's freaking awesome to, that you came by. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So let's just get this party started. Uh, so like, what is your story? Like what got you into voice acting? You know, I have, <sighs> I have different answers every time I answer this because there's there's not just one answer. Uh, there is just one answer on how I got into voice acting, but what what inspired me? It, it's it, there's many answers for that. First of all, my father used to work for Disney when I was a little kid, and he used to bring me into the studio, into the recording studio, to watch um, some of the biggest names in the uh, promo business for Disney. Uh, and I used to watch that and I became enamored with being in the recording studio and watching them do that. But then, you know, as you grow older, sometimes you forget memories, you know, from when you were a little kid. And so fast forward to when I was in middle school, uh, I, there was a career day, there was a career day and I, you know, I'm like 12, 11 at this point. I don't know what I want to do. There's so many things that I want to do, but I didn't pin one down and I walk into my homeroom, and there is a gentleman, a tall gentleman with gray hair, and he's setting up a video. And on the board, it says voice actor or voice acting. And I thought, what? What is that? What? And it turns out that that gentleman was none other than Rob Paulson, who is the voice oh, of wow. Yakko from Animaniacs, uh, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, Carl from Jimmy Neutron, and I. the list can go on and on, and PJ from Goof Troop and, and the Goofy movies, you know, all of that. Um, because I guess his son, I believe his son went to this, my, my school, but was not there at the same time. But either way... Uh, he was able to do the pinky voice for the entire class. But then I had to leave the homeroom because we had to go to our assigned classrooms for whatever career we had signed up to hear about. So oh that my was God. my, I know it was horrible. I was like, but I want to stay here. And I couldn't. So that was my second memory. And if then one late- kid out in your class during that time said, I wanted to be a voice actor at 12 years old. And then right. they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't choose this. You got to go to the other uh, class. Exactly. B. Can you imagine? That's cruel. I know. So cruel. The world is cruel. Uh, so uh, that was my second memory. And then jumping forward to, I don't know, maybe about a year later or so, I started to get into anime. A friend introduced me to the wonderful series that I can't believe that I am now a part of, uh, Sailor Moon, because as you know, back in the day, Sailor Moon was on Toonami. Um, For me, it was every day at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, So I would watch it when I would get home from school and I just, I loved it. I fell in love with it. And then of course that led up to watching Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing and Tenshi Muyo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, so what? um were you not a fan of Tenchi? I tried to get into Tenchi. I tried, but I I just couldn't. I, it just, you know, anyway. So I mean, I I loved <laughs> Little Washu. Little Washu was the best part for me. I loved Little Washu. Um, but anyway, so I remember that and then I just got into anime after that and then I kind of dropped off from anime for a bit and then when I got to college, um I was trying to get a theater arts degree, which I ended up just dropping for reasons I'll get into in a second. But I uh, I needed some 
courses done. So one of them was a voice and diction class, and I needed two semesters of that. So I took one semester with a fantastic professor who uh, truly, you, every time he spoke, it was like he was speaking poetry. It was ridiculous. And then the second semester was being offered by a wonderful lady uh, by the name of Peggy O'Neill, who is also a voice actress. And on the I don't want to say advertisement, but on the, the flyer for her class, it showed characters from Digimon and Scrap Princess and Wolf's Rain. And I was like, I know all of these shows. That is really cool. So then I decided to take Peggy's class. And she is a voice actress who has been in all of those shows and many, many more. And I took her class for about a semester and I realized, you know what? Uh, I feel like I, I want to get into this. I think I want to get into this because I've been an actor my whole life. I've been an actor my whole life. It has always been in my blood. Uh, I got bit when I was about two years old by the acting bug, probably. I don't know how, but I just did. So I knew <laughs> from a very early age that I wanted to perform and I wanted to create and all of that. So I took the class with her and I said, you know, Peggy, I think I... I think I want to try this. And she said, well, if you are serious about it and if you want to try it out, then you need to take some extra classes and get in front of people and audition. And I thought, okay, how do I do that? Because when you realize you want to do voice acting, there are so many resources out there nowadays. But back then, there wasn't as many resources. And also, it's incredibly overwhelming. It's incredibly overwhelming. So it's always good to get direct uh, recommendations, in my opinion. So she suggested that I take a course with a studio uh, located in Los Angeles called Bang Zoom Entertainment. And they were offering a class uh, named uh, Adventures in Voice Acting. And I ended up taking that when they were just starting with those courses. Uh, the instructor for it was Tony Oliver, who is not only a fantastic human being, but a wonderful actor, director, writer. Um, Tony, um, many people know him for many different things, but mainly uh, Rick Hunter from Robotech um, and many, many others. As soon as I try and list Tony's credits, my mind just goes blank just because there's so many. Uh, but anyway, so I took the, forever. oh my gosh, he really has. So I took the course with Tony and during the course, we were able to go into the studio and kind of get a feel for how dubbing worked. And so I went in. And he immediately pulled me aside after class and said, you should be doing this for a living. And I said, oh, really? Okay. Dang. So then he put me on an auditioning list for a show uh, that would be happening within the next couple of months. And then I got called and I was cast in my very first anime, which was Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha. And I played Arf and Chrono Harlown. So oh, that wow. was... Uh, Sorry, kids. That's a long story, but that's how I got into voice acting. So I love the I love the yeah. long story. See, but this is but this is the kind of thing I always like to ask. I mean, I know you've heard this question hundreds of times. I mean, when you're going out on the circuits and stuff, but like to do a sure. one on one in a nice casual spot, yes. without worrying about back ambient noise and stuff like that. I love. I mean, I could, I would be able to listen to this all day, like just to see, like what got you, in, like just to see what, like your your own personal story of it, because well, I it, feel it that that's more genuine than the way it would be if I was at a convention. And I and I agree with you, um, you know, because we're kind of pressed for time at conventions a lot, and for me personally, it didn't occur to me until recently that. I feel there are so many things, like there are three memories that I just told you about in my entire life that directed me to get to this point. So I do mm -hmm. feel that it was meant to be. So, Oh, yeah. no, most definitely. It's, I mean, that's awesome that you got like that, like high praise like that. That's that, like, it's like, oh yeah, you should, you, it's like, you have a voice for this. And that, that's awesome. And it's. Right. And it's not even, and it's not even, I, I do want to point out, it's not even the voice, it's the performance and it's the, it's the skill. That's something mm. that a lot of people don't understand and, and they might mistake it. Um, you can have an amazing voice, right? You can do an amazing impression of uh, Kermit the Frog or Yoda or whichever. And, and that's wonderful if you can do impressions. That's great. But can you act? That's the real question. Can you act and can you do the dubbing skill? Because the dubbing skill, as I said, is actually a skill. 
And you can train for that. You can also learn how to do it. But with more experience is how you become better at it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely love that. No, that's great. That's an awesome. That's an awesome story. I definitely. <laughs> I just, I'm still just would be. I'm still kicking. I'm just the yeah, just the idea with Rob Pulse and that one. That's the one that kind of gets me like, oh, you I gotta know. be kidding me. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And I wow. and I and I and I thought to myself, well, I don't think they're actually checking to see if like all of the names are. You know, maybe I could just, but I was a good kid. I was not a rebel. I didn't lie. I didn't break the rules. So I I was. I was a goody two shoes, so I just chose to be honest, and yeah. and I thought, well, maybe one day I meet him again. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I hope you have by now. Uh, I really hope you have by now. I would love to oh, talk yes. to that. Oh yes, Rob, that Rob, uh, Rob, and I—we haven't seen each other in a long time. Um, but mm. he's he's a dear, sweet man, and I also have uh, been fortunate to meet many people that I now adore. Um, you know, uh, Jennifer. Hale, people that I now adore, such as Jennifer Hale, who we all know who the amazing Jennifer Hale is. Um, and uh, yeah, just many, many people that um, I feel very privileged to know and to be in the same industry with. Uh, Steve Bloom is an amazing human being and I adore him. He's a wonderful, dear person and a, and a good friend. And Mary Elizabeth McGlynn is also quite amazing herself. Um, just so, There's so many people. There's so many people in this industry that um, are just, I just feel really lucky to work with or to know. That's really awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh uh, well, here's another here's another cool question I've been kind of wondering about. I mean, I know it's no secret that you're a fan of horror, the horror genre, like I horror films and stuff like secret. that. I love that the world and the internet knows that. I love it. Anyway, continue. If, if it was, it would be the world's worst secret. But so. Right? I, think so. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, like, I, uh, what are your three all time favorite? Uh, horror films i mean no order just what like when it comes to horror in your mind what is your three all-time favorite horror films okay see listen something that you need to know about me and some something that the entire internet needs to know about me i am horrible with questions that ask me for favorites because here's the thing it's always changing it's always changing and i feel like and if i feel like if i say this is my favorite blah, blah, blah. And then a month later, someone says, what's your favorite blah, blah, blah. And if I give them a different answer, then I'm going to seem like a fake. I'm going to seem like, Oh, I understand. I understand. (laughs) (laughs) But here's the, here's the counter to your, to, to that, to that, to a rebuttal for, for that, because we only have an hour, like at least an hour, (laughs) you know, at least an hour on this podcast. I don't know about you, but if we go into a deep discussion about horror films, I would be it would take the whole episode and I would be like, yeah, I need to limit it because I don't Girl. like I, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like I absolutely I, so I, I agree. Where you're coming from. I completely I completely agree. So I'm just letting everybody out there know in Internet land that I do love horror. And there are many <laughs> movies that I love. So just so you know, my favorites are always based on my mood. They're always based mm-hmm. on in the moment. So just. Just so you know. Okay, favorites. Um, <laughs> so first of all, uh, they're my fa- th- these are my favorites because they they still freak me out or scare me, or they're just really good to this day. Um, three came to mind immediately. One is The Exorcist. Uh, that no, movie first. is always going to terrify me. Um, but it's so good. It's such a mm. oh, it's such an amazing movie. Um do I have to pick three, or can I can I fit in a fourth one? Can I fit in okay, a fourth I'll, one? Okay, uh, since I like you, we'll do four. <laughs> okay, four. I'll we'll do, do four, four, and I promise that's it. I promise that's it. <laughs> so, okay, so The Exorcist is one. The next is Poltergeist, uh, the original Poltergeist, uh, mm-hmm. because that I believe that was the first horror movie that I ever watched, and it's just so good, and it's so creepy. They're here. You know, you can't go oh, wrong yeah. with that. Um, oh, my God. The third is the first Conjuring. I thought the Conjuring was very well done. Yes. James Wan is an amazing director and also mm-hmm. a fabulous human being. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting him. Um, I think after it was after the Saw movies, but uh, he's a very sweet person. Um, 
And uh, the fourth one is a movie that it's kind of a hit or a miss with people, but I personally mm-hmm. really like it. And that is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. That is one never, of my episodes. I've never watched favorite. that one. I've heard of it. That's that's <clears throat> that, that that just I mean that's hasn't it's it hasn't been a long time for that get that one to be released, right? Is that a recent one? Fairly recent? Oh no, 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 no. Exorcism of Emily Rose was released in two thousand five, I believe. And it stars oh. Jennifer Carpenter as Emily Rose and Tom Wilkinson as the as the priest. <clears throat> um and uh, Laura Linney, who is an amazing actress, um, it's it's what's cool about it is it's a courtroom drama, and mm-hmm. what it's about is um, this priest that's being, uh, and forgive me if I get the terms wrong, please don't judge me. Um, it's about this priest that is arrested on um, <clears throat> grounds of a negligent homicide, and pretty much what that means is that he, in this particular case, he did not pay attention to Emily's health and performed exorcisms on her. And that is what the court believes originally led to her death. But what the movie is about is Laura Linney plays his um, uh, defense attorney. And they basically are going between two different perspectives. They are going from the perspective of, um, the spiritual perspective, which was, yes, Emily Rose was possessed by about six demons or the medical perspective, which was no, Emily Rose was mentally ill and she suffered from psychosis and epilepsy and all of that. And they basically go into all the testimonies explaining what each person's perspective was. And it's mm. incredibly freaky to this day. Honestly, it, it gives me chills and it's just so well done. It's I, I it like sounds, horror. I'm sorry. Oh, I was, was going to say, it sounds kind of su- like super psychological. That sounds really like pretty cool. Good. Pretty cool. It's very good. I, I like horror movies that have, that don't always go for the cheap scare or the mm-hmm. campy acting. I'm much more, no, I like it when it has substance to it, yeah. you know, um, like which is why, scare. I, like, well, no I don't, scares and all that. I don't mind jump scares. I don't mind it, but as long as it's not every five seconds, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I like, you know, I just like, different kind of genres so you know like a lot of people a lot of people are slasher fans i'm not really a slasher fan i have not seen Mm -hmm. the new scream yet i probably will because you know i want to but i have to watch the original first uh, Mm -hmm. because i don't remember anything from it uh so yeah i uh yeah i'm a big horror nut (laughs) it's so crazy like uh how old were you when you watched the original exorcism uh or exorcist I was okay. So there's actually a story behind that. Um, there's a story behind everything, Davis. I hope you're ready for it. So <laughs> oh, I, uh, so when I was about seven years old, I really wanted to watch The Bride of Frankenstein, and my dad, who was one of my best friends when it comes to movies, like my dad and I are just big movie buffs. Um, and my my dad said, "Okay, well we'll go rent it, but." Just so you know, this was known as one of the scariest movies of its time when it came out. And I said, oh, okay. Oh, I'm so excited. I was a weird kid. Anyway, so I just, you know, <laughs> I was really excited. And my friend and I were having a sleepover and we watched it. And I don't know if you've seen The Bride of Frankenstein. While it is, you know, part of cinema history, oh my God, it is so slow. There, nothing happens. Bride, the bride doesn't even come in until the end. So I just was waiting and waiting for something scary to happen. And I was just like, nothing is happening. And so I was kind of left disappointed because I was just like, I wasn't scared by that. So fast forward to when I was about 13, um, my friend said, oh, you need to see The Exorcist. It's really scary. And the way she was describing it didn't sound very scary to me. But I was like, hey, why not? I'll try it. So then I said, hey, dad, we're going to go rent The Exorcist. And my dad (laughs) says, okay, but Lauren, this movie was known to be one of the scariest movies of its time when it came out. And I said, yeah, right. Okay. Because he warned me about that for The Bride of Frankenstein. And look what happened. I was not scared. I was bored. So I just didn't believe him. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. 
okay, well, that oh immediately God. changed. And and I, <laughs> I think about a half oh. hour, I think about, uh, I think I want to say like a half hour, 45 minutes into the film, don't quote me on the exact time, is when stuff starts to happen, you know? It gets real, and yeah. <laughs> the first real thing, yeah. And the moment, the first moment where she's on the bed and she flops back and her eyes like go in the back of her head and this this growl comes out of her, that is the moment where I thought to myself, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Um so, and needless to say, there's a lot more very disturbing and very scary scenes in that entire movie. And I, I just, to this day, it still horrifies me. To this day, I still have to cover my eyes. I so. love it because it's like, you, it, I, I want to know if your dad maybe like, you know, set you up to kind of like a, the, the long game of that because like Ryder Frankenstein <laughs> was like the fifties and they're like, okay, so that right. so just putting them back in the mind to just say, mm-hmm. Hey. This is what a horror movie was. So yes. watch out. And then he's like, okay, I set the seed there. Let's just wait for it to grow a little bit until they actually decided to release. I don't even like, know, man. The the, the, I don't even know, but I just know, I just know that I just was I, I went out and I said, Dad, this is a really scary movie. And he said, I told you. And I was, you know, so it was very, I couldn't sleep for two weeks after that. I couldn't sleep a full night's sleep for two weeks. That was one of the scariest movies when I was a kid watching that. And uh, like uh, that, that one's like definitely on the list for me, but, uh, but like pet cemetery was the one that I just, I could, for some reason, sure. like, I don't know why. Cause oddly the thing is like, I've never had a pet when I was growing up, but I was like, I don't know what got me connected to that film, but it's just like, maybe well, the first kid, of all, it's, first the, the, of all, it's the child. King. Stephen that Stephen King knows how to get into your fears. That's why he's such a brilliant writer. Um, you know, I mean, look at it. You know, look at look at it. It's, oh, it's, yeah. You know, it's like so many kids have a phobia, or kids and adults have a phobia of clowns. You know, I I've never had a phobia of clowns. I love clowns. I'm like, give me all the clowns. You know. Also, I forgot to mention that even though it's not one of my favorites, I and even though I don't love the slasher genre, I love Chucky. Who doesn't love Chucky? Oh. Like, come you know, on. Funny. Every every time when I see Chucky, I just can't help but laugh because I'll be like, your your kill list as a doll is literally <laughs> ridiculous comparatively. You know, it's like, yeah, how do you, like how how do you kill so many people? And how many times does a doll and a doll gets away with it? Like, y'all cannot kill a doll. <laughs> like, at I know. All. Like, yeah, yeah, really. Like, funny. come on now. He's made of plastic. <laughs> He's made like, I'm of damned plastic. if I'm going to get killed by you. It's like if I die I- from you. I deserved it. <laughs> I will say, I, I and I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but if I ever, if I am ever given the opportunity to meet Brad Dorif, that would make my entire year because he just, he's so, so incredibly talented. Not just as a voiceover actor, but just as an actor. Um, because he was in a, he was in a movie, an older movie with Jack Nicholson called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where oh yeah, was, yeah, yeah. He was amazing as the character Billy, and he also was in another little adorable movie called Escape to Witch Mountain, where he played what? this. Yes, he was not he in the was, original. He was, in, that? He was oh. in the remake. He was in the remake the one with The Rock. No, I don't think The Rock. No, no, no. Wait, what was The Rock in Escape to Witch Mountain? Well, when he was starting his career, the escape the they when they rebooted Escape to Witch Mountain, he was in it as like a driver or something like that. Like well, he well, was Brad the, Dorif uh, was. Brad Dorif was the driver in in one of the remakes. There must have been more than one remake, but oh, okay, I didn't know. I thought uh, there was only one set of remakes, but you're probably yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I remember because again, my dad, being my movie buff friend, was you know I was watching and he said, "Well, you know who that is, don't you?" And I said, "Who?" He says, "Well, that's that's the voice of your good pal, Jucky." And I was like, <laughs> "What?" So it was just so funny, but that's that's. I did not know. Wow, that's. That is crazy. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. But but uh, I will say just real quick, one of my one of my all time favorite horrors was the thing, John Carpenter, uh, back with, sure. uh, with Kurt Russell and stuff. Mm-hmm. I love the the <laughs> like it didn't take a, no scenes, just close space, and then just basically like who is it? Who's the yeah. uh, who's the fake? And then it's just oh, I love that. Tensions I was young, are high, but, man. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I loved it. Ugh, okay, mm-hmm, cool. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, all right. And uh, uh, is there like, um, I mean, like, uh, is there something that you like to do to kind of unwind or disconnect from uh, uh, when you do like a, a day's work of like voice acting or if you've, or a voiceover work or anything like like what is it that you do to kind of step away from that? You know, honestly, I'm a I'm a big, uh, you know, I I, I love to write <clears throat> and I'm currently mm -hmm. writing something that I can't really talk about at the moment. But uh, I, you know, I write. I also uh, just get lost in whatever series I'm watching because that's how I escape. That's my, you know, that's my way of decompressing. Sometimes I'll go for a drive. I do love driving you know, regardless of living in Los Angeles, I, I do like driving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, just, uh, anything that will help ease my mind. So, you know, there's a lot of answers to that. Um, yeah, but okay. after a long day, like after a full day of recording, um, honestly, just chilling and resting is probably the best thing I can do or anybody mm -hmm. can do now. Is that always possible? No, <laughs> but <laughs> we try. So, right. Yeah. Oh, fair enough and uh uh yeah and uh, also like and i know you uh uh you like to stream on twitch uh shameless plug check her out lauren landa on twitch and uh, <laughs> and i i saw uh i saw your recent like your like last week uh like your annie cosplay stream when there was this you just oh, chatting with nice. and stuff like that so it was really cool uh and i uh, like like uh i was just kind of curious like what other kind of stuff do you <laughs> like to stream when you uh, uh stream on twitch well, first of all, thank you for the shameless plug because I am horrible at plugging myself. I'm horrible <laughs> at like, you know, just letting people know. So I'm going to do that real quick because otherwise I will forget. <laughs> so yeah, you guys can follow me at twitch.tv slash Lauren Landa. It's just one word. And also, if you guys are on Twitter, please follow me at uh, Lauren underscore A underscore Landa on Twitter. I will say that if you are following a Lauren Landa account on Instagram, my friends, that is a fake account. It has been up for years. Uh, please mm -hmm. go and follow it because that is not me. That is someone that created <laughs> that profile. So it is not me. Anyway. Uh. So, yes. What else do I like to stream? Well, um, I do like to stream video games, the video games that I want to play, uh, which not it doesn't always necessarily mean it's the popular game at the moment. If I like mm -hmm. the game, then I'll play it. But I have to like the game in order to play it. Um, right now I'm streaming. Well, I haven't been able to stream in, gosh, over a week now just because my schedule has been so crazy. But um, right now I'm streaming GTA 5, which... <sighs> Jeez, I, I love the game, but oh my gosh, there's so many swear words and ugly words in yeah. that game. And I'm just like, oh God. <laughs> but people who are watching me know that it is GTA 5, so it's kind of to be expected. Um, are you but, playing the regular uh, game or are you playing the online? I am playing the regular game. Um, a lot okay. of people want me to play online. A lot of people want me to play online, and I don't really know why. Uh, I don't know what features online has that the regular game doesn't. Um, but uh, yeah, so games. I also do Jackbox streams with um, guest people. I also, I haven't done it in a minute, but I also do voice actor guest streams as well. Um, not just voice actor guest streams. I've done other people that are not voice actors, uh, but I just do guest streams. And sometimes I'll do voice actor panels or cast panels. Um, I've done... Two, I think I've done two Skate the Infinity panels, and I've done one or two Beastars uh, panels. I'd love to do more, uh, you know, hopefully soon. The problem is, is that a lot of people started expecting that that was all my stream was about. All they wanted was mm. more guest streams and, and panels. And I love doing them, but that's not what my channel is all about. I have a variety of things on my channel. So I kind of had to take yeah. a step away from that a little bit. But that will be starting again very soon. I already have some guests in mind. So uh, that will be starting up again very soon. Oh, also... Another uh, plug, I also have a YouTube channel, uh, and mm -hmm. it's just under Lauren Landa. Uh, so, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we're very, it's really it's really fortunate that you got your full name and stuff without that, uh, without putting, like, anything extra and stuff into it. Well, you know, that's pretty, that's really that, nice. Yes, that is true uh, for YouTube, uh, but for other things, I, I might have to change it. I'm not sure, but yes. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky. But yes, I also have a YouTube channel, um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm working on it, and I'm trying to come up <laughs> with other stuff to post on there. Um, but time, I love your videos, who has time? Like, yeah, 
Yeah, I love the videos that you do with like, or I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was Twitch or if it was YouTube, but the one with you, because like when you and Jonah Scott was like just <laughs> going back and forth with each other, that's just like, <laughs> oh my god, this is just got that's, crazy, <laughs> got really funny. That's me and Jonah. <laughs> whenever we have a panel together or whenever we interact, it's just you know Jonah and I, Jonah Scott, who's the voice of Lego She from B Stars. He and I met through B Stars. And he is a he's a wonderful human being, and he and I have become very good friends um, because of B Stars. And he has just blown up overnight, and I'm very proud of him for that. And and I really want to do my best to support him because he's incredibly talented. He is incredibly incredibly talented, and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it too. It's like you're just like yeah, has a little bit of ego. No, I'm just saying. No, my, my words, no, no, not no. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. No, Jonah. No, Jonah. Jonah. No, I'm what just I. Kidding. Oh no, no, no. Jonah. Jonah is the least egotistical person that I know. Um, but <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate that he knows, like many actors do, they know what they can do with their skills, and that's yeah. kind of more of what I meant. But no, Jonah is is a is a very sweet, very nice person, and uh, he's incredibly talented, and lucky to have him as a friend. Um, and and he's he's doing it man he's he's really doing super well and i'm super proud of him yeah i talked well uh, we've talked to him actually i think we talked to him about five months ago uh, uh, oh, on, nice. this, uh, on here yeah and like he basically just told me the whole story like you know where, where like where like how it all started i was like wow dude that's just sleeping impressive. on a mattress <laughs> just, 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 yes, <laughs> with, with some ro- with roommates and stuff like with, your yep. other, with the other people and then just like wow then you it got your first always- role was Lakoshi. <laughs> Is yeah. it's not always a glamorous thing, and a lot of people think it is, and it's not. So no, you know, yeah, he paid his dues. I'm glad, yeah, definitely glad for him too. I totally agree. Uh, and uh, like, uh, do you ever play any games that you yourself did, like that you were in? Like, uh, have you ever done yes. that? Yes, I started uh, Scarlet Nexus, uh, uh, and I play Kyoka Eden in that. Um, I I got a little intimidated by. It. I got really? a little intimidated. It's a gorgeous game and it's so much fun, but I am not a gamer. I like to play video games, but I am definitely not like, a, I mean, I guess I am a gamer now, but you, you know, I'm not like a professional gamer. I don't play games on normal settings. Sometimes I have to play it on easy. Like, but I will say I'm pretty sure I'd have to go back and look, but for resident evil village, I'm pretty sure I, I either played it on normal or easy and nobody can judge me for that. Okay, look, everybody no, on no, your no. YouTube channel, they're gonna they're gonna comment judging Lauren, judging. It's fine, whatever. But it was still fun because I I wanted to play it for the story. I didn't want to play it for the game, you know, the the battle, the gameplay and the battle. I want the battles, I wanted it for the story. So that's kind of why I put it on easy. That's you know, you but, know what? You don't even need to explain yourself on that because the way I've always looked at it, though, too, because like for instance, you play beautiful games like Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden uh-huh. West and stuff like that. <laughs> Some people don't care about. I mean, people do care about the fighting and then you know the the story to get to the uh, to finish the, from point A to point right. B. But some people just want to play to play the story, and and right. uh, and I just yeah. And uh, there's different kinds of gaming, and uh, uh, so right. I know there's the people that are like the get goods, you know, like the people who are like, hey, let me do Elden Ring backwards and, and blindfolded and stuff look, like that. <laughs> look, look, okay, listen, listen, my my okay, listen, I I just got my boyfriend Elden Ring for his birthday. And I'm just like, good luck. You're going to want to rage quit in about an hour. Good luck to you. You know, um, I have not played Elden Ring, but I I have many friends who are way bigger gamers than me. And even they are like, I can't with this game. I can't. Like, because apparently <laughs> it takes like a full hour to beat the first boss or something. Like, I don't really, I don't really know. But um, I've heard that it's like Dark Souls. And Dark Souls, I've heard many, many times is just very difficult so that's already a big nope for me um you yeah, know but I, system. I, I totally understand <laughs> <laughs> and there are plenty of other games like i really want to play mass effect i want to play mass effect i've never played mass effect um my two my two favorite games are red dead redemption 2 and uh days gone days gone's great and i love i love the gta games i think they're a lot of fun i need to play oh, days and gone. that's the one game oh, oh spider-man yes days gone is so good you have to play it it's so good 
my ex gave me that a long time ago like like maybe when it first came out on the ps4 and i was like okay let me try playing it and uh, to be honest with you i only played two hours of it so i didn't really mm. give it a good chance but i've always said to myself i really need to go back on this game because i've heard that this it gets better like story-wise and stuff you know some people it's a hit or a miss for some people like you know just like every game for me i loved it because it was open world i'm much more of the open world kind of stuff i like the side missions i i like that mm-hmm. i i like exploring that. exploring all of that um i hate mm-hmm. grinding i hate grinding with a fiery passion because i just want to get on with it that's why i'm always horrible with the final fantasy games because they they require for you to grind and i just and to level up and i just I just couldn't do it, but I love Final Fantasy. That's it's Final Fantasy Eight is my favorite Final Fantasy game. So, yeah, so, so it just sounds like you seem like a gamer that love that, that loves stories, but yes. just don't want to go through the uh, you know the repetitiveness of like you know uh, yeah. So that's normal. That's that's normal. I, well, that's cool. thank you, thank you, Davis. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate. Yeah. That. Well, yeah. I just say like, <laughs> hey, a game is a game. If you play it the way you wanted to play it, that's awesome. That's cool. But you're not less of a gamer because that you're playing it on easy. That's all I'm saying. It's just like well, it's just you like your priorities is just different. That's all it matters. Well, I, I, mean. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. Okay, now, uh, like, uh, as you already know, uh, and you already said earlier, like Sailor Moon here in the states has come a long way from when the original dubs in the '90s had these censorships. Mm -hmm. were happening uh now that you are able to play like an uncensored version or the original like i guess essentially like the original version was how sailor uranus was supposed to be like oh sailor neptune kind of oh i'm I'm sorry yeah sailor neptune my bad yeah uh uh, (laughs) yeah that you like uh the original feel like did you have any kind of feelings on the representation of the uh, lgbtq of like from where it initially started did i feel did i have any kind of feelings on the represent well i mean Okay, I'm going to answer this as best as I can. So first of all, when I was a Sailor Moon fan, I loved the fact that they were a couple. I have always been um, incredibly supportive of the LGBTQ plus community, um, you know, and I have many friends that are in that community and I do consider myself an ally. Um, so uh, 100%, I, I support it. Uh, I support the representation. Um, and, you know, I... I What I usually tell people is that back in the 90s, it was a different time, Um, you know, it was a different time. And also, I want to point out that the original Canadian cast of Sailor Moon and the director, they are all wonderful people who they knew, they knew what the relationship was between Uranus and Neptune. But, you know, they it wasn't really their choice, unfortunately. So they, they couldn't really go anywhere with that, unfortunately. Um, but I, when I found out that I was cast as Sailor Neptune, both myself and Erica Mendez, who played Sailor Uranus, we both knew that we wanted to help bring their relationship, their true relationship to life. And we wanted to help, you know, bring that love alive as best as we could. We were both very, very excited to help bring them to life with the original relationship that they intended uh, to have and that they did have. So yeah, 100%. I'm, I feel, I really feel honored. Um, I feel honored to have been a part of that. And while I myself might not be, um, a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I, I certainly so greatly appreciate, um, the fans and their support for people, uh, you know, the people within the LGBTQ plus community, my friends, people that I don't even know, they have been so incredibly supportive of it. And, and that's something that I appreciate, you know, and, and I greatly appreciate their support. And I, and I love that they liked my performance and Erica's performance, uh, that if they're happy, then I'm happy. That's basically well, that's the good. short answer. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I just know for the, like, I mean, like, cause I mean, if I remember correctly, cause I'm trying to remember, uh, fully cause I know how it was originally, I guess it's like, you know, the adult swim version was that they, they introduced Neptune and Uranus, like, uh, Uranus as, uh, as like not brother and sister, but they were like, cousins. kind of they relatives. Were cousins. Yeah. They're relatives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and no, and, and it was, to no one's fault of that because you're right 90s like the 90s and that was the time when you know 
uh, where things were really st- uh, sticky, and especially like I mean, shoot, there, there was heavy censorship and even Dragon Ball for crying out loud. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, but like then, when you realize, like when you look at the when you either if someone read the mangas b- back in the day or yeah. even to now, like you know uh, the stuff like that, because like uh, uh, I'm not really you know myself personally, I'm not really uh knowledgeable of sailor moon but i but i do sure. know that like when you see all when you see this kind of jump of like oh this is how they were supposed to be it's still like uh it's like wow we like it's a little jarring. The realization of saying yeah just the realization where it just comes like you're saying wow this came we came a really long way from where like where what it was you know 20 something years ago it's insane you know when you really well what's what's it. interesting to me is that in the original in the original subtitled version they they very much were a couple and it's interesting to me how in the states we we couldn't i'm sorry not in the states in in canada uh they weren't able to do that um so yes we have come very far and i will tell you upright that i was terrified when i was cast as sailor neptune i was terrified because i really just wanted to do right by her and i wanted to make sure that you know cuz the thing about sailor moon that everybody loves and the reason why so many people are drawn to this show is because it teaches us so many things about love and to accept ourselves for who we are and to love ourselves and also how we treat people in our lives and i i just wanted to help bring that notion of this is what uranus and neptune really are this is who they are this is their love this is their true love and there is and it's it, there's it's there's nothing wrong with it it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing and it's gorgeous and their love for each other is incredibly strong and i just felt honored to play a character that did have that kind of love and did have that kind of partnership um and when i say partnership i mean life partner um destined partner fighting part all of the above so i just i felt incredibly fortunate and and honored to have played her and i and i to this day, I truly hope that I truly hope that people like my performance as her because it meant a lot to me personally because Sailor Neptune and Uranus were my two favorite characters in Sailor Moon. So <laughs> they did keep they did make it interesting, I will say. <laughs> like I mean yeah. like, they, as a group and everything, it did make it really interesting. Well, so, it's yeah, it's definitely. a full circle for me, which makes it even more special. So I just, you know, when I was cast as her, I, I was very excited for myself because, you know, as the character that I've that I wanted to play since I was a kid. But at the same time, I knew that there was something more, something bigger than what I was excited about. So, yeah. Right. Well, that's awesome. Well, no, you did a, you did a fantastic job on it. So Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. All right. It, yeah. And I mean, and uh, uh, it has been like over, it's been eight years since the first season of Attack on Titan when you first played the female Titan, Annie Lockhart, or Leonhardt, sorry, Annie Leonhardt. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, and now on its final season, when you look back at it, is there something that you miss either in the series itself or with Annie, the character, like uh, the, uh, that you would miss when you see, when you, when, when it's finally said and done? Honestly, I, I just, this show has been such a huge part of my life and my career. It was my first show with Funimation. So that's always going to be very near and dear to my heart. Um, I've also met such amazing people through this show that are now dear friends of mine. Um, but apart from that, I recently binge watched the whole, the whole se- well, not the whole series, but up until, you know, when they started releasing part two of season four, uh, and I was watching it. I tried to separate myself from, you know, just just as a viewer, as opposed to someone who's in the show. And I honestly, I was watching it and I started to cry in many different scenes because the performances in this show are absolutely amazing. Like I, I can't I was trying to think of another word other than amazing, but they're they're just fantastic. And I, it's such an amazing show and I truly do not think, I don't think there's going to be another anime like it ever. I really don't. Um, now, like I said, I could be proven wrong, but I don't see it happening. And and I, if it's wrong, I will be happy to admit it, but I don't think there's ever going to be an anime like Attack on Titan. And, but anyway, in answer to your question, am I going to miss anything? Um... I just, you know, it's one of those things where 
we don't want our favorite series to end, but at some point they're going to have to end. And I don't want this show to end. I don't want it to end. I want it to continue. I want, I want to see the main character save the world. I want to, I want them to save it from the horrors that are happening right now, you know? Um, but in Annie, as far as Annie goes in particular, I am going to miss, <laughs> she's just such an awesome character. She's such really an awesome is. character. And, and yeah, she, I'm, ju- I'm just going to miss playing her because I don't, I, again, I'll be surprised if I'm ever cast as another character exactly like Annie, but I, I'm going to miss her arc, like her story arc, because, you know, in the first season, we don't really know much about her. And we are just now learning about Annie a little more. And her arc is just so fascinating to me because, you know, from a young age, she was brainwashed into thinking, you know, the people of parody were these evil people. And, and she was trained as a soldier from a young child, from a young age. And, and so, you know, but the audience is, is built to believe, Oh, she's, she's the enemy. She's the antagonist. When really, the show basically tells you, okay, but who's the real villain here? You know, like who's, who's, who are we supposed to root for? And that's, what's so compelling about the show. I'm not even answering your question at this point. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Because, I mean, look, it, it, it's like some, I mean, I, I was actually kind of 50, 50 wanting to ask. Cause I really kind of was like, you know, it's really be, would be a little tough because this show, I would say the one thing I love about this show about Attack on Titan, cause originally it, it's the roller coaster of Attack on Titan itself and story wise right. is probably like you were saying, it's something that you, I don't, and I, and I totally agree with you when you're saying this, you don't, you won't see another show like this. Like, right. like I don't think you'll ever see a show like this because the pacing of this show is so up and down that yeah. I have never like, but like it have their highs, they have their suspense. Then you have the lows about like what, what like what's going on. <clears throat> then you find the twist. Then you find the yep. twist within the twist. And then you find like I mean this thing puts you in a like <sighs> in a ringer of like like what are you needing to root for or who is the good guy, who's the bad guy, which is incredible because you don't usually see that, especially in an anime. No, uh, you really don't. Yeah, like especially in the anime, and like how de- crazy the story can get, and it makes a lot of sense, you know. So. So, but uh, yeah, so I will accept the running on sentence <laughs> oh, 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 with this. But I'm just saying. There's just, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this show. Okay. That's all. But, but in, in a short answer, I'm going to miss everything. So <laughs> okay. there you that go. Is perfectly fine. I'll totally agree with that. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, and, uh, and here's just a random uh, hypothetical. Cause I mean, also throughout your career, you played a lot of iconic fighting game characters like Karen from, uh, Karen from street fighter five, Kasumi mm-hmm. DOA five, Lychee, blaze blue, uh, like just to name a few of them. Like, I mean, do you have like a, like a favorite <laughs> fighter that you play like oh well, i shouldn't say favorite but do you have like like i know you- because you know how i do with favorite questions davis didn't do did we not right? learn this earlier <laughs> on in the podcast uh <laughs> i didn't know when i was writing this down <laughs> so, <laughs> but like uh or like who would you think would win Let, let's say we won't let you choose so it's just like who would you say would win in a fight like uh in like a fight if if they all came at uh came at each other at the same time if they all came at each other at the same time, have you seen the characters that I play? Um, oh, I have. <laughs> oh man, I, I, yeah. I, I think it would be. It would have to be okay. Well, honestly, I feel like I feel like Kading Kanzuki and Kasumi would probably be the last two fighting. Like I think oh, they would okay. be the last two standing. Because they are both incredible fighters, um, and I think uh, I, I, out of the two of them, though, I have no. Who do you think would win? I personally think Karin, in my opinion. Really? Like, I just okay. Think, like, yeah, I, I just think like <clears throat> I just think that like, something about her because like I, and because I play a lot of fighting games and with her in her, in her set, she's just so annoying. <laughs> but like uh, overall, <laughs> you know, like that's okay because because <laughs> I, I'll tell you something. With the exception of Kasumi, I I please don't ask me why. I am usually cast as characters that are incredibly technical that I can't play them. They're way too, <laughs> I can't play as Lychee. I can't play as Kadeen. I can't because I will, I will die. I will oh, die. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a button masher. That's how I play video games. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how I play fighting games. So 
I can't, I, I, I just, the whole combo, the whole, t- I can't. And, and the fact that the fact that there are tournaments for these games is amazing to me because I'm just like, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Can you Sometimes teach me like your way? Tur- you're totally right. Like when you watch an Evo <laughs> tournament and you're like, wow, these people are just like, oh my God. I thought this and person could do all of this and stuff. Yeah. It's, I am pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm either Cotting won Evo or she almost won Evo. I don't remember, but I honestly do not remember, <laughs> but this I can was see like before I know, the pandemic. So yeah, I don't remember. I know like the number one persons, like people like in uh, Korea, uh, Korea in uh, in Asia was using Karin and she he was just almost unstoppable. I think it was Gamer B. I can't remember. It's but, crazy, yeah, this, man. Yeah. <laughs> it is I crazy. love it. I love I love that there is a whole world for that. I love it. All right. OK, so I got one final <laughs> question for you. And uh, okay. uh, we good. Uh, like, and I love the Beast Star series, and uh, and the character that you play, Juno, is like an interesting character uh, herself. Like, besides being like super thirsty for Legoshi, and uh, to me, to me, <laughs> <laughs> she brings like an interesting vibe that causes me to kind of not trust her. I don't know why or what it is uh, about okay. about because of her bubbliness <laughs> or her positivity. Are you saying bubbly you know? people can't be trusted? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying that it like you know how you have that fake like you see you see fake happiness or some sort yes. or like fake positivity. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting with her all the time. Got like you. like okay. uh like uh yeah, so like what was your feeling or experience on like I mean like when you played Juno herself? Like what was your per- uh do you have any personal feeling on that? Well, first of all, like Attack on Titan, I have not read the manga for B Stars and I also love the show. The show is just so the show's just so good. Um you know, from the performer's perspective, honestly, again, I have not read the manga, but I I mm-hmm. see right now where I'm at, I see Juno as someone who just I don't think she I don't think she's two-faced. I don't think she's two-faced. I don't think she has an agenda. I think she's just she unfortunately I I think just really wants to be noticed and I think she really <laughs> wants to be loved. And I think she, I think she wants to help in some cases, but unfortunately I think she's just in the way more so. And I think, I think she's overzealous and I think she's maybe a little overly anxious to help. Um, <clears throat> with Lego, she, you know, who knows what's going to happen in season three, right? Like I, I have no idea if, if she's going to now be more into Louie because she and Louie have started to have a little, you know, connection there. Um, and I think I ship her and Louie more than I ship her and Legoshi anyway. <laughs> so, I would agree with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I love, I love Legoshi. And I think, I think if Juno were a little different, I think Legoshi and Juno would make an awesome couple, but it just, but you got, you got Legoshi who is the most awkward boy on the planet. And then you have Juno who is like, Legoshi, let's do this. Let's do that. And it's like, oh my God, calm yourself, girl. Just calm yourself. <laughs> Just shh, it's okay. So I um yeah, but I as far as as far as what I see with her, I think honestly, I just see her as this kind of lovesick wolf who just really wants to be noticed and wants to help, but just maybe gets in the way when that's not what she's trying to do. So I kind of feel bad for her, but I can definitely see why some fans would find her annoying, um, because many people do. But also, many people love her, so you know. <laughs> okay. good, good one, good choice, good, good one. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Really appreciate it. It was awesome talking to you. It was, it was great. Uh, before I let you go, is there like, uh, are there any upcoming events or anything that you can like let us, uh, let let your fans know that they they'll be able to see you like at a convention or anything like that? Yes, actually, I have quite a few. Okay, so first off, um, I don't know when you're airing this, so it might be a little late, but I do have a Streamily signing uh, to uh, April 9th, which is tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Lauren Landa. My next convention appearance will be at SAC Anime Spring. Um, that will be April. I have to look at my calendar now. That will be... Um, April 15th to the 17th. And then I will be at a uh, one-day event 
in Kingsland, Georgia, and it's uh, Beta Quest. And then May, uh, I will be at an event in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I can't say the name because it hasn't been announced yet, I don't think. And then um, the weekend of May 28th, I will be at Anime Boston, which I'm very excited about because I love Anime Boston. I haven't been there in a couple <laughs> years, so it's going to be great. And uh, let's see. In June, I'm going to be in Texas at Kyokai Con. And uh, there's going to be a bunch. And for those Thank of you me. who want to know what appearances I will be at, please give my Twitter a follow. That is the best place to see all the announcements. And also go to my website, which is laurenalanda.com. I'll be updating all of my appearances there as well. But if you have a Twitter, please follow me on Twitter because that is where I post most of my announcements and appearances and all of that. So um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, also on my Twitch, I will also be doing a voice request stream at some point very soon, which is very exciting. Um, usually what happens with my Twitch channel is we will set a sub goal. And if we meet the sub goal, then we do whatever the goal is. And that was a sub goal that my chat wanted. So we got it. Um, That's awesome. Yes. So, and there will be more. I'm sure there will be more cosplay streams. While I am not a cosplayer, I am not a professional cosplayer. Uh, I just do it for the sub goals. They're a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so uh, my streaming schedule is not really set. But again, if you follow me on Twitter, you will know when I'm streaming. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah, man. That is some good plug. <laughs> That's a good, good plug. <gasps> I'm so proud of myself. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I usually forget. So <laughs> I forgot like how many conventions there are again. Like now, since we're kind of getting back into the full steam of things, it's like, oh, wow, that's right, man. It's like oh, a my Lord. every week nowadays. <laughs> it's going to be insane, man. It's going to be crazy. And for those of you who are going to be at those conventions, please come by and say hi and uh, please get something signed because it's been years since we had conventions all the time so we're getting back to it man oh big deals yeah big big deal well like once again thank you lauren for coming on and uh uh and and folks thank you can uh, check out this podcast interview with the amazing lauren landa as well as any other podcast episodes of the uh a podcast uh, uh sorry pop culture gems <laughs> on our <laughs> website i almost forgot the name of my own show that's terrible <laughs> <laughs> at confreaksandgeeks.com oh definitely <laughs> or check out uh, uh, Pop Culture Gems on any podcast services out there uh, we, it would really be appreciated so once again this is Davis signing off y'all take it easy bye guys <laughs>